Hello, I'm back with another little mini video for beginners and today's subject is going to be this thing you're looking at here which is an opto coupler. It actually looks like a looks like an IC but it's not. In this particular case here one side is an LED and the other side is a photo transistor. Basically if you had a separate LED and a separate photo transistor that would be the same thing as this but this is just conveniently in one package now I recently repaired a switch mode power supply which had a bad um, optocoupler so today I'm going to show how I actually went about testing this thing now let me just talk about the optocoupler again for another few seconds uh, basically all this does is couple signals from one side to the other side but it does it so that the both sides are electrically isolated from one another the signal is applied to the LED which is which is here on the left side here and the LED emits light the light hits the phototransistor the phototransistor is turned on and the signal leaves again that's basically about in a nutshell that's basically it now there are different kinds of optocouplers there are some with six pins and there's some on the other side they might have an SCR or a DIAC or something like that or they might even have a um, photo transistor with a base pin so there are different configurations you actually have to go ahead and look up your component number and then get the data sheet for it. Now it's always a good idea to get the data sheet if you can for a specific component and this was pretty easy to get and here we can look at the guts basically pin 1 is the anode that's the positive side the cathode is the minus side and here we've got the collector and here we've got the emitter. Now the data sheets are also going to show us uh, which pin is what. It has the pin out. You can see here there's a little dot in one corner. That's the anode. This will be the cathode. And opposite of that dot on the far side would be the collector. And this would be then the emitter. And if we take another look at the data sheet, it says here input forward voltage, typical 1.2 volts. So now we're going to go ahead and hook up the multimeter now and put it in diode mode and see if we can't get these 1.2 volts. So we have the meter hooked up, red pin on the anode, black pin on the cathode. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the meter. Now here's what we get. We get 1.1 volts. So we're pretty close to the 1.2 volts. So the forward voltage, basically the voltage needed to turn this thing on, turn the LED on, is 1.1 volts in this case. Now I simply reverse the test leads and I put the black lead on the anode, the red lead on the cathode, and I'm getting an OL reading, means um, I'm not getting any type of voltage drop, which is good because the LED should only conduct in one direction. So I can safely conclude this LED is good. I mean, if I had an open both sides or I had a low resistance reading both ways, I would know something is wrong. Now we'll go ahead and check the uh, other side the collector to emitter transistor side now I have the red lead on the collector and the black lead on the emitter and I'm getting a open basically a very high resistance which is what I should get and when I reverse the leads now I should be getting the same thing so I'm basically getting the same thing which is a open which is correct again uh, uh, a lot of times when transistors for example fail and we have to remember this is like a 
this is basically a transistor without the without a base pin um, transistor will fail from collector to emitter but since I'm getting um, high resistance both ways and um, I'm not getting any kind of a short in one direction or another so I can safely conclude this uh, optocoupler is okay now I have two meters hooked up I have the small meter in diode mode and that's hooked up to the input side and I have the large meter hooked up to the collector emitter side and that's in ohms mode and you can see here now we're getting a reading I actually managed to turn it on somewhat and if I shut the diode function off I should go back to a OL or open circuit again which is exactly what I'm getting Now if you're working on a switch mode power supply like this, this little uh, power supplies from a laptop you really have to ask yourself if it's worth it doing it. Um, they're really cheap nowadays and I can only envision doing it if you have one of these uh, power supplies and it goes bad and the stores are all closed or it takes over a week to get to you if you order it online or you're doing a friend a favor or something otherwise these things are so cheap it's really not worth it um, and also if you do work on something like this go ahead and use an isolation transformer so you don't put yourself in any unnecessary danger now if you're not comfortable with working with line voltages or other high voltages for example like in that little power supply that I just uh, showed there are not too many parts in there. You can always like unsolder them or unsolder one side and then take uh, measurements with the power off. Like for example, this optocoupler, you could all, it's only got like four pins. You could pull it really fast and then test it as I uh, just did a few minutes earlier. Now I've got the opt optocoupler. Now I've got it uh, on the little breadboard. And I'm going to go ahead and apply some voltage to it. I have the green and yellow wire that's hooked up to the emitter and the uh, collector. And over here, these red wires, one is uh, hooked up to the anode, the top one. The bottom is going to be hooked up to the cathode. And here we can see the uh, leads from the uh, power supply. What I'm going to do is feed in probably about 5 volts. And we have to remember this is, uh, there is an LED in there, so we need a dropping resistor. And with the 5 volts, I'm going to try 5 volts or 6 volts. I'm using a 400 and, um, 470 ohms, uh, because we don't want to subject this to too high voltages. Also, um, you have to watch out that you don't, just like with a regular diode, that you don't, put a high voltage on here and a high DC voltage but you uh, hook it up wrong for example you hook up the positive to the cathode and the uh, the minus to the uh, anode and then you burn it out well what we could also do we can also go ahead and just for fun um, hook up a, a, just a diode like a 4148 a cheap diode for now hook it up across the anode and cathode so if we did hook it up wrong, the your current would flow through the diode in the other way. We're going to hook it up. This will be the anode here in the IC and the cathode here. And when we hook up the diode, we'll have it the opposite way around. The cathode will be here and the anode will be here. So if we do get, get things backwards and we have a positive voltage here, that current will flow through the anode at 4148 instead and it won't destroy this. Let me go ahead and get one of those. So now I've got the protective diode in there and we can see the anode here is hooked up the anode of, of the protective diode the 4148 is hooked up to the cathode of the uh, LED and the optocoupler and here the cathode here on top here is hooked up to the anode. So basically if I get the 
power supply lines mixed up and I feed in a positive voltage down here which is not supposed to be um, the current will just go through the diode and um, that'll be that then so basically nothing will happen now if I take a look at the spec sheet again we see the reverse voltage 6 volts that means if I hook it up backwards um, I should be able to take a maximum of 6 volts backwards if I hook this thing up but I've got the um, little protection diode I put in there which um, should be able to take a lot more if you, if you hook this thing up wrong should be able to take a lot more than 6 volts at any rate I'm um, safe now I won't um, burn it out now if we take a closer quick look at the uh, spec sheet we can see that the maximum collector emitter voltage is 35 volts um, and the Isolation voltage is 5,000 volts. That's the um, isolation voltage is between the LED side and the um, the transistor side. So it should be able to take up to 5,000 volts before it um, gives up. But I wouldn't want to push it that far, probably. Okay, I've got my meter hooked up to the... Um, transistor side between the collector and emitter and it's in the ohms position and here I'm going to turn on the power supply in a few seconds we can see the positive input from the power supply going to the dropping resistor to the LED um, and once I bring up the voltage we should be able to see this um, the resistance change let me go ahead and make sure that's that voltage isn't too high and I'll go ahead and bring it up to maybe um, 5 volts well maybe I should go ahead and um, plug in the power supply first let me find the cable so here we go that did help um, actually plugged the found a cable for the power supply and put that into a wall socket I don't know how many times I've did this before I've worked on thousands of pieces of equipment uh, doing electronics since a young age and I still do stuff like forget to plug it in or uh, have the meter set up wrong, the scope set up wrong uh, I don't know if I'm the only one that happens to I guess well anyways uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the voltage now I'm at uh, about uh, 2 volts right now and we can see something is actually happening on the ohmmeter and let me go ahead and bring it up to about 5 volts and it's getting you can see it's actually um, the resistance is actually going down and down and down so yeah I'm at 5 volts right now and we can see here the um, I would say the opto isolator if you want to check it this way and you're not comfortable with checking um, the stuff in circuit you can always pull it out you can check it as I did before or even do it like this if you want to be even more sure that there's um, that things are working as they're supposed to I'll go ahead and bring the voltage back down and the resistance will go back up basically so that was that now I'm going to go ahead and um, just for good measure I'm going to go ahead and um, hook up my function generator and now I have everything hooked up and I'm feeding in a square wave to the LED side and off of the collector pin I'm going to go ahead and take a reading. I have the scope hooked up and we can take a look at the scope now. Now here's the waveform I'm getting. Again I'm taking the reading direct from the collector pin and we can see what we got. I'm going to go ahead and vary now the input frequency to the LED side and we can see what happens here. So you can see that you can actually go ahead and take a scope and measure a waveform. That's basically all I wanted to show that that is possible. 
anyways, I think this about sums this video up, and uh, thanks for watching.